Number 35, given these three equations, and then we're just going to jump down to letter A. But before we do that, just know that these three equations have delta G values, right? They all have their own delta G value, and they're all spontaneous negative values. So from this information, from these three equations, let's look at letter A. Letter A says we need to determine the standard free energy of formation, the delta G uh, notch with an F, for phosphoric acid. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to put a letter A over here. I'm not even going to look at letter B for now. But we need to find out a standard free energy formation, so we're looking for a delta G for phosphoric acid. Now, the first thing is, well, what is phosphoric acid? Well, there could be a little hint. It's got to be in one of these, right? So you either know what phosphoric is, you know, phosphoric acid off the top of your head, or you know that it's an acid, so it has to have an H in the front, right? So we're looking for compounds that have H's in the front, and it's got to have phosphorus. So I'm looking for an H in the front with phosphorus. This is the only one. So phosphoric acid is H3PO4. Now, they didn't tell me the equation to use to find out the standard free energy of formation. All they did was they told us that we're forming formation H3PO4. And when we're forming something, we always form from our elemental substances, right? Remember those uh, free elements and the diatomics. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to make up our own equation. What is the formation equation of H3PO4? So I'm just going to put a little arrow here. And I know that I want to make H3PO4. And it says that it's a liquid, so I'm going to just put a liquid here. Now I have three different elements, right? I have hydrogen, I got phosphorus, and I got oxygen. So I have to take those three elements and combine them together to make my phosphoric acid. But now the thing here, and maybe I'll say H plus P plus O. Now the thing is, H, P, and O, which ones are diatomics, which ones are free elements? Keep in mind your diatomics, right? You could think of them as Brinkelhoff. Um, you could look at the periodic table. Um, there's a couple of different ways to know them, but I just like to memorize them. Hydrogen is in there, so that means that H is always going to exist as H2, and oxygen is in there as well, so that's O2. Phosphorus is a free element. Now, I'm just going to go up here. Now, we're taking H2 gas, so that checks out, so I know that I'm going to use this as a gas. O2, I see that the O2 is a gas here as well. And in this case, I'm looking for the phosphorus component. However, I only see a P4. So I have to use that phosphorus. This is a P4. Okay. Now, what's an equation without balancing it, right? So the next thing we have to do, you know, that we have to do is we have to balance it. Keep in mind that if you're forming something, you are only allowed one of your product. So I can't have two of these. I can't have three. I have to manipulate these guys to get to one H3PO4. So let's go to hydrogen first, right? Hydrogen, I need three of them, but I only have two. So I need to multiply by a value. Two times what will get me three? Well, it's going to be a fraction, unfortunately, but just think of it as a variable, right? Two times what will equal three. So I'll just quickly say, okay, two times what variable that I'm going to put in front of here equals three. If I just divide by two, I get my answer. X equals three over two. So my first uh, variable, not variable, what first coefficient is three over two. Let's keep going. I only am allowed one phosphorus. So I'm only allowed, you know, one phosphorus, right? So do the same thing. I have four phosphorus. So four times what will get me um, just one phosphorus? 
So four times what will get me one? If I divide by four on both sides, you see what the answer is, right? One over four. So one over four for this one. And now let's see, I have four oxygens. I have two here. So two times what will get me four, two times two. Okay, that's probably the hardest part. Now we have to use these, um, we have to use these equations to find out what we're doing, you know, going from left to right. Now, usually when we do this, I like to always go from left to right, only focusing on one component at a time. Now, keep in mind, you're, you're thinking of two things here. You want to know how many you need, and you want to know what side. Because basically what we're doing is we're doing Hess's law, but now for just delta G values. So let's talk about H2. I want three over two H2s, and I want it on the left side. So L for left. Go to the three equations to see which one gives you the H2. And it's the second one. Here it is. How many do they give you? Well, they give you two H2s, and it's on the left side. So the sides are correct. I don't have to flip this equation, but the numbers are incorrect, right? I want three over two, and it's giving me two. So I'm going to have to take this equation and times it by something to make it equal three over two. So we could do the same exact idea as we did before. I'm starting off with two. So maybe I'll just put it down here. And I want to times it by something to get it to three over two. So let's figure it out. Divide by two. I'm going to take this fraction. I'm going to divide by two. This we can do maybe, you know, writing it out. Or we could do, you know, handy dandy calcy, right? I could go over here. I could say three divided by two. And then I'm going to divide by two. 0.75. Now, if you want to find out what that is in fraction form, all you have to do is go to math and this word, frac, that stands for fraction. So if I take my answer, 0.75, turn it into a fraction, boom, there it is, three over four. Look how easy that is. So I'm going to take this equation and multiply all the coefficients by three over four. So let's do that. So from left to right, two times three over four is now the three over two H2. Three over two H2. And maybe I'll just say that this is equation number two. Three over four times 102 would be three over four. Three over four O2. And I guess I'll put the states here. Gas, gas. And now I have two, two times three over four. Well, let's see, two times three divided by four, 1.5, if you want it into a fraction, maybe let's try it out again. Go to math, frac, enter, put that into a fraction, three over two. So now I have three over two. Look how easy the calculator makes it, right? Three over two H2O gas. Now, you got to be fair. If we multiply this whole equation by 3 over 4, what do you think we have to do with the delta G? Yeah, I got to times this by 3 over 4 as well. So, my new delta G value would be negative 457.18. Uh, times 3 divided by 4. Okay, so now my new delta G is negative 342.885. Okay, and that's basically kilojoules per mole. So I'll just add this kilojoule per mole. Okay, one equation done. Once you use it, you never use it again. And we don't care about the H2 anymore. Now we just keep moving, right? Now we're going to try to get that one fourth P4. So I, I want one fourth of it, right? And I want it on the left side. Go search for the P4. Oh, it's right here. 
but I only have one of them, right? There's no coefficient in the front. That means that it's one, but I want a fourth. So one times anything is the number that you want. In this case, I want one fourth. So I'll times by one fourth, which means I just have to times each number by a fourth. So now I'm going to take my equation number two. Actually, no, equation number one and times all the coefficients by um, one fourth. So one times a fourth is now one fourth P4 solid plus. OK, here we go. We got a 502 five times four. So let's see, five, actually five times one divided by four. 1.25, let's turn that into a fraction, math, fraction, enter, then enter again, five over four. So five over four, O oh twos, yes. And now that's gonna equal one fourth times one is a fourth. And that's P4, O10. And now I have to multiply the delta G value by one fourth. So negative two, six, nine, seven. I don't have to put the point zero times one divided by four, or you could just say divide by four. It's the same thing. Oop, not one divided by one. There we go. So now my new Delta G value is negative 674.25 kilojoules per mole. Maybe I'll just write it like that. Okay, and equation one is done. We only got one more equation, right? Now here's a good rule of thumb. The next one is O2, but I see that there's two equations that have O2 in them. And the one that I'm gonna use doesn't have the O2. So what you can do for any you know, uh, substance that are in multiple equations, just skip right over it. Don't even bother because the math will work itself out in the end. So now I'm just going to focus on the H3PO4. I want one of them. I want one of them and I want it on the right side. And look, the only equation that's left has the H3PO4. But you got four of them. I want one. So what would I have to do to the four to get to one? Yeah, I'm going to have to take the whole thing and divide it by four. Right, because four divided by four is one. So here we go, equation number three, six divided by four. Let's more calculated practice, six divided by four, 1.5 if we want to get that into a fraction, three over two. So I get three over two H2Os, gas plus one, divided by four is a fourth. So I have one fourth P four O 10. That's a solid. And then here we go. Four divided by four. That's only one H three PO four. That's exactly what we wanted. And now what am I going to have to do with the Delta G? Well, I have to divide it by four. So negative. 428.66 divided by four. Okay, I get a negative 107.165 kilojoules per mole. All right, we exhausted all of our equations that we could use. Let's just see if we form the equation that we wanted. What we're gonna do is I'm just gonna quickly move this up a little bit here. And remember, opposite uh, substances are always going to cancel out. So for example, I have one fourth P, uh, P4010 on the left side, right? And I have one fourth P4010 on the right side. They're this exactly the same, the same number. So that means that they cancel. So goodbye and goodbye. Also with the waters, you have three over two H2Os. So it seems like we're doing it right. We have three over two H2Os. They're exactly the same. They're on the opposite sides of that arrow, the yield sign. So they go bye-bye. Uh, nothing else that I can, you know, cross off. So you're left with H2, 
P4 and two different O2s. Since they're on the same side, you add them. So you're left with 3 over 2H2. And that's exactly what we wanted, so that checks out. We wanted the 1 fourth P4. That's exactly what we wanted, so that checks out. And now let's just add these fractions together, right? We have 3 over 4 plus 5 over 4. Remember, when you're adding, if you have the same denominator, you just add the numerator. Technically, 3 plus 5 is 8. So you have 8 over 4, but 8 divided by 4 is 2. So you have two O twos, and that's exactly what we wanted. This will yield my 1 H3PO4. So... We checked and everything looks good. The last thing that we have to do is get that delta G value. The delta G value is now when you're going to add all of the delta G values up. So you're going to add the three delta G's that you have. So let's see. Uh, negative 342. Whoop. 342 point. 885 plus a negative 674. Good catch. Oh boy, what am I doing? 674 plus 25 plus a negative 107.165. Enter. And I get a negative 1124. 1,124.3. And maybe I will write this up top where the answer for A is. So for letter A, my delta G for formation is negative 1,124.3 kilojoules per mole. Okay, letter A is done. Now for letter B, it says, how does the calculated result, so that's our result, compare to the value in appendix G, aka go in the back of the book and find out what the delta G value is for H3PO4. And that's exactly what I did. In the back of the textbook, the delta G of formation for H3PO4 is literally the same number, negative 1,124.3. So how does it compare? It is exactly the same. Now, explain the meaning behind this is because if you have a delta G of formation, it does not matter the intermediate steps. It doesn't matter if you formed this from 15 steps, three steps, as in this problem, if you just... Um, used your elemental substances, any time that you're dealing with a delta G F, that means that it's a state function. And state function functions do not, you know, count for intermediate steps. It's just whatever the beginning is and what the ending is, it will be exactly the same. And that's kind of the, uh, the explanation there. Yeah? This one was a long one, but I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel. And I'll be talking to you soon. Okay? See you in later lessons. Bye-bye.